Pat O'Brien started in 1933 in a little tiny bar. Charlie Cantrell and Pat O'Brien bought this location at 718 St. Peter together in 1940 and opened this location in 1942. My grandfather was the general manager for them in the early 1940s when they first came here and just kind of was a backbone to the success of the business. My dad followed suit through high school, college, sweeping, bartending, etc. Just kind of moved on from there. And they, they started buying stock from Cantrell and O'Brien in the 80s. Pat O'Brien's has been a staple in nightlife in New Orleans for decades. I mean, our motto is have fun. Our main goal is for people to come in and have a good time. There's a little bit of something for everybody, and it's really hard to kind of put your thumb on what exactly it is because we're kind of the place for all ages. We have several options for entertainment. We have the main bar, which we're in right now, local casual bar. Across the carriageway, we have a piano lounge where entertainers entertain with each other, dueling pianos, and we have a large courtyard with a flaming fountain. When this building was built, it was built as a residence, and you can kind of tell when you look through the buildings of, oh, that makes sense there, that makes sense there. The piano lounge was part of the residence, but after the family moved out, it became a Spanish theater. So what we've all been told from all, all along is that that was the first Spanish theater in the United States, and we still perform there now. During World War II, when Cantrell and O'Brien came to this location, a lot of the distilleries around the country were being used to make other things, bullets or clothing or whatever. That facility was used to do other things than make liquor. However, being so close to the islands, rum was readily available to come up the river and they would bring the rum to this port. They were kind of experimenting with different flavors of what customers liked, what people preferred and whatnot. And then a, a salesman came in with a, a hurricane-shaped glass. One idea at the other and just mixing back and forth, they came up with a passion fruit mix that the crowd liked. And it included rum. So problem solved, call it a hurricane, put it in a hurricane glass, garnish it with an orange and cherry straw, and you're good to go. I think it's an honor to carry on this business, third generation, um, what my, you know, my grandfather and my dad have, have laid down, and I've done my best to carry it on as best I can. My two sons um, are now working at the bar. They graduated from LSU. So they want to be a part of this legacy as well. Hopefully, um, if it all works out, they will, they will be in this position um, you know, a few decades from now, a couple of decades from now. It really is pretty, especially, especially since there aren't too many generational business owners anymore. Whether it's in New Orleans or elsewhere, they're, they're really just a small handful of us here in New Orleans. You know, corporations are buying up everything, so we're not going to go corporate. We are definitely local bread.